Hey guys, it is about 4.25 a.m. Just got out here and gonna get set up to milk. So usually when you see me, I'm doing the gates, which means I'm moving cows, cleaning off the beds, bringing them in, and then I work in the parlor too. But this morning I'm actually gonna be staying in the milking parlor. And so I'm gonna have to set up the milk house and someone else is moving cows today. I wanna do a video sometime where I go into depth more of the milking system and how everything works. I'm not gonna do that today, but I'll show you a little bit. This is the milk tank. This is what we call the milk house. And the first thing I have to do is put the milk line down to the, the uh, tent milk tank, hook it up. This is where the milk comes through. And right now it's up here, this is a drain. It's because it was running the wash after last night's milking. So I was running hot water and soap through it. So this is just going down the drain. I'm gonna swing this down so the milk can pump into the milk tank. Now that I have the milk line on here, just gotta open up this valve. The milk tank has a cooling system in it and big stirrers in there, keep it moving. So it's about 36, 37 degrees is what it keeps it at. Came out here in a sweatshirt this morning because it's 48 degrees. I'm really liking this weather, just gotta get used to it a little bit. I know the cows like it. Everything's done, cleaned everything up, the outside of the milkers, and put them there in the wash cups. Started the wash, so it'll run a hot wash through with soap and then a rinse. Heading down to the heifers. Back here at the home farm now. Today the hoof trimmer's here. He just got here a little bit ago. So we're gonna have to set up for him. Okay, we got some cows sorted out for him to get started. I'm gonna go get some breakfast and then we'll get back out here. Had a little break. We're gonna have to go sort out cows for the hoof trimmer soon. But I'm down here at this pit that we had cleaned out last week and I wanna spread this product on. It's called Breakdown. There's a few benefits we get from this. It helps reduce the, the buildup of solids, and so when you go to agitate, it's a quicker process. And then it also reduces the loss of nitrogen, so the fertilizer value is a little better. And it also reduces the odor that the manure has, which is nice too. So I'm just gonna sprinkle some of this on here and just show you how we do it. This is actually the first time I've done it in this pit. We always do it up in our main barn. I'm gonna go ahead and spread it. I got the three different holes open up. There's one over there and then over there. Try to cover most of the surface. We got some more cows sorted out for the hoof trimmer. Now I'm, I brought the breakdown up here. I'm gonna spread a little bit here on the slats, just at the back of the parlor here, where we get some more buildup of solids. If you're interested in trying breakdown, I'm actually gonna leave the link to their website in the description. And if you place an order, make sure you let them know that you found out about it through my video and they'll give you a small discount. So check it out. He'll be done trimming cows pretty soon, so we'll have to clean up after him. We are planning to start planting cover crops very soon. So I wanna get the drill out, get it greased, and clean it out if it needs to be. I'm not sure if there's something left in it yet or not. Yep, still a little bit of alfalfa in there. Since April. 
Gonna unhook that thing and hook it up to here. Definitely should have got this alpha alpha seat out of here like four months ago, but Now I got the majority of it out gonna need to use the shop back to get it out of each of these little rectangle pieces at the bottom Had over a hundred dollars worth of seed left in there yet. We always trim the cows before dry up, but these have been dried up just a little bit early. So we had to chase them up, trim them. Now we're chasing them back down to the dry cow barn. Okay, the trimmer's done, he's out of here. We always put shavings in here just to help with footing while the cows are in here, and then we gotta clean it out. I'm working on getting this planter ready to go. There's grease fittings the whole way around different spots. There's one that's kind of hard to get to down in here on this bearing. On each of the 24 rows. So that's kind of the hardest part of this job. The worst ones are here in the front where you got no space. You got to climb in there and get to them. I got the planter ready to go. Just gonna have to load it with seed then. I wanna take a few minutes here to actually look over my field maps and figure out exactly what we wanna plant and where. Haven't really figured the acreage out yet quite. So gonna take a little bit of time here. Just been looking at my field maps here and figuring out what I wanna do with certain acres. We're planning to do a little bit of something different this fall. I have 130 acres of corn stubble that we want to get cover crops planted in. And so here we have our triticale. If you remember in the spring, we were harvesting triticale uh, as spring forage. We're going to do that again, but we're also going to do some rye this year. And so it'll be the harvest window is just a little bit different for those two crops. So it'll be able to, we'll be able to do actually a few more acres. But we'll have less to do at one time and it should help us be able to get it in. The idea is at least one of those weeks will be good and we'll be able to get a good crop of one of them and whatever makes better feed will stick in our silo here for the milk cows and then if some gets rained on or whatever we'll have to put it down at the heifer farm. It'll be just fine for them. I'm ready to put seed in the planter now but I'm going to go up and bed half the free cell barn they're ready for it. The milkers have the cows out. Got the bedding done. Now I'm gonna grab the skid loader here and we're gonna get 20 bags and put them in that cedar. All right, so I put 11 bags in. That's enough for a five and a half acre field at 100 pounds per acre. This way I can see how my rates come out. If I need to make any adjustments, I'm not doing too many acres. And then next time we'll fill it up the whole way full. Here's my seeding rate chart. I'm gonna kind of consider this to be like rye. It's it's not rye, but it's triticale. It's very similar. So we're shooting for 100 pounds per acre. So between the 24th and 28th notch, we'll try that. 
here's how you adjust it then. So we'll go up to 26 or something. Right there. I'm just gonna back this thing in the shed now because I have a few other chores to do before I mix feed. And we'll get to this later. I don't know, maybe tomorrow or Monday. got the feed run out now this corn silage that we're feeding has only been in the bunk for three weeks which isn't ideal we like it in there for a couple months before you even touch it is really the best two weeks is the minimum so at least we have that but the type of corn we have planted was uh it's the mycogen unified and that stuff does better if you if you have to feed it earlier it feeds better and so that's one thing we're not quite as worried about feeding it right now we didn't see a drop in milk it'll be interesting to see here what they do once they get adjusted they might even get a little bit of production increase just because we think it's really good feed. So that'll be it. Thanks for watching, guys.